Hey. Mm, a beacon of hope. All right, so as New Zealand, Paul, I'll, uh, I'll let you guide us through the, uh, the Australian offense, Gussie. <coughs> sure thing. It's been received by Matt Hanna, Senator Anto Hagen. Nick Lowy's looking breakside, gets it. And he's going to punt it deep, I reckon. Ooh, nice nice defense distance, there. Huh? Number 81, that's uh, Daniel Linklater. Linklater now finds uh, Josh Driscoll on the under. Driscoll's not got a lot, but finds it as an under here coming. He hasn't seen it, but gets there eventually. Oh, Lely unfortunately can't get that block. Number nine, nice little up the line cut. Driscoll's on the sideline here, close to the commentary booth. They're still getting these up the lines off. Australia not really shutting down the unders at the moment. Sided with the disc. It's another under. Pressure's increasing. They throw to the end zone. Oh, nicely blocked by Australian player. Is that Eichner, number 55? Yes, great block there. We've got O'Hagan walking to pick it up. It's the pinnacle of harm. Calm. The what? <laughs> the pinnacle of calm. <laughs> oh, yeah, O'Hagan, he's looking very comfortable out there. Nick Lurley, front of a diamond diagonal stack. Making the initiating move. And it's going to go. Matt Hunter and Nick Lelly in pursuit. Some New Zealand defenders on their back. Mm. Just drifts out. Broke, of course, one of the cardinal rules of uh, Ultimate Frisbee, which is the disc must be in the field as well as in the air for it to be, for it to be caught. That's right. So neither team in a real hurry to, uh, to push the pace with these, uh, on these turns. No. Very happy to set it up. Fair enough, too. They're all probably playing quite new structures. I want to give them a chance to set it, but uh, we'll give the Australian team a little bit of an opportunity to have a look. See what the initiating play is. Bring it in from the far sidelines, Rowan Burns. Bit of pressure now. Another big pass. Finds number 80 in space. For his dump. Oh, and nicely picked up from the bootstraps by uh, Campbell Nauman. Number 20 now with the disc, Sean McCowan. Oh, just a uh, miscue there, gives the disc back to the Australians. Well, he gets Ooh. it up. Decent discussion here, I reckon. No. Looking good. Lely in a tight space there, and uh, number nine, that's Josh Driscoll. Does a good job of breaking it up. Oh, nice little give go there. Number 81 in power position. Shoots to the end zone. Bit too floaty. And uh, everybody goes under it in the end. That's a good result for the Australians. Unfortunate for the New Zealanders. There is a bit of a breeze here this morning at the fields. Uh, pushing probably away from the camera cross field mostly. It's not really up and down. It's also a bit swirly. So we'll see. <laughs> My grass test is inconclusive. As Hannah looks for that undercut. Lely is a workhorse out there. Centers to O'Hagan. Gets it straight back. Oh, but it's a great D by Josh Driscoll. Yeah, Driscoll again blocking uh, Lele's little up the line movement. It's two blocks from Driscoll in pretty much the same space there, so it's a nice move from him. All oh, the insides are working nicely for the New Zealanders. It's there on the far sideline. Number 34, Sider gets it off. It's now in the middle of the field for the New Zealanders. They're working it up on their reverse brick. You think he's looking on the inside. Oh. Oh, a bit too much contact there on the mark, potentially. Oh, Hagen. Just a little bit of a friendly discussion. That's coming in on six. Looks for his dump. High stall. Oh, it just goes past the outstretched hands of McEwen. Gets it out to Lely. Another nice up the line pass there. 
O'Hagan puts it up high. Nick Lally underneath it. It's just floated over the side. <laughs> He's got it on the second attempt. The Australian boys rush the field. It's one apiece it's one here all. in Balmain. Oh, well, that was exciting, Gussie. This <laughs> sure wind was. is unpredictable, I'll tell you what. Unpredictable. It's an excitement factory out there. Now for folks just tuning in, tuning in uh, this will be the first of, well, we've got a, just a slew of games to bring you today. From, An absolute uh, slew, yeah. <laughs> slew is the right word. <laughs> slew is the collective noun for many Frisbee games. Uh, both the Australian men and women under 20, I'm sorry, under 18 teams will be uh, playing three games over this weekend um, to determine the winner of the Trans-Tasman Tests. Uh, there will also be um, some games in between with the Australia A squads. Um, so the Australia A squads are a uh, new addition to kind of bring a few more of the juniors along for the ride um, in terms of development. Uh, so they'll be playing games in between, uh, which is quite exciting, I think, Gussie. It sure is. It's great to see for Australian ultimate, for these young guys, to be able to go back to school after the school holidays and have a video of themselves playing for Australia or New Zealand. And unfortunately have our voices over the top of it as uh, New Zealand gets their second chances uh, at offence. It's Whitlock with the disc. A little bit of confusion in the handle sets, but well managed. Oh, and it, there's a lot of deep players. So Graham in pursuit, but he won't get there, I don't think. And New Zealand makes easy work of it in the end. Maybe just a bit of a miscommunication there defensively. Uh, a lot of space on the break side for uh, for number 80. Mm. So 2-1, Gussie. 2-1. It's only just beginning. A, it's a clean offensive point from, um, from New Zealand, which I'll be very happy with. Capitalised on a bit of a miscommunication there. Paddy Graham was deep. There, I think he's uh, he's a very big boy, so he did well to get it past him. And that um, it may be the strategy early for Australia to um, to see if they can't push a few of these hugs, especially given this unpredictable wind, and uh, trust their boys to get underneath it. But uh, maybe a bit too much space given. Um, so, it's, you see Kyle O, uh, head coach of the, uh, the Thunder Boys, calling the line there. Rob Swan, the assistant on the other sideline. We've also got uh, Greta Murdoch helping the boys on the sideline. It's going to be fielded by Keys up to Hodgson in the middle. First cut coming from Nichols for the under. He's got a few options deep and he's going to throw it. Sharp blade. Well teed by number nine there for New Zealand. Yeah, nice little play. Josh Driscoll. Driscoll's getting blocks. Oh, he's getting blocks all over the place. So that on the far sideline, nice little dump move there. This goes to 42. Rowan Burns. And this coming now. Still looking upfield, looks to his dump now. Nice little movement there, 49 gets it off. Still stuck on this sideline. Pump fakes it, he's got no dump. Eight goes to position. A nice little move. Bit of an impetuous throw potentially on the break side. It is always exciting when you get that disc on the break and you're just oh. so open. You got it in flow on the break side. Yeah, you just sometimes you just have to throw it. Mm. Even though there's no one there. Just gotta indicate to everybody. Keys is picking it up. The Thunder Boys are coming out in a diagonal setup. Hodgson at the front. Looking to get it in the middle. Middle. Bit of a miscommunication and New Zealand are gonna have a crack at offense. Yeah. The uh, thrower thought the play was still on, and I think Julio had probably already pulled out of it. So it's Nauman on the sideline. Another inside pass. They're loving it. It's floaty. And number 22 
is calling a foul. I think it's a strip call potentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, you may have noticed uh, that amongst the other yellow shirts, there are a few game advisors here. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it certainly looked like number 22 had begun the act of catching. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think they've agreed that he had not completed the act of catching. And as a result, Australia gets a disc. Watch them bring it in. Oh, unlucky there. Looking to center it to Keys. New Zealand on the doorstep. New Zealand in no hurry to bring it in. As uh, Whitlock saunters to the disc. Will it be another one of those insides? Uh, yes, it will. <laughs> and a nice little high flick there for New Zealand. Capitalizes on uh, Australian errors and uh, that puts them up a break. Yep. Bit of difficulty in that far right corner. I think that's probably, it's not the strongest win, but if there is a wind, that's going to be the hardest place to throw it from. Mm. Yeah, and it's interesting the Australian under-18s are playing this diag stack from these corners. It's certainly seen a lot more Australian teams playing this kind of set. Probably the one thing I'd say about this stack is it's, it's a little bit deeper than what you might expect a diag stack to be. Uh, Gussie, I'd, you'd normally expect a uh, the one and two, those cl players closest to the corner, to be a little bit closer, but they're giving themselves a bit more space, potentially to even open up some deep shots straight off the bat. Mm -hmm. No doubt. And Australia are going to have an offensive point. We've got Boyle on the line, Prendergast, Keys, number 55, of Lachlan, Eichner, Alan Kidd, Anto Hagen. And of course, number 18, who unfortunately don't have written down here on our little sheet. Tommy Boyle, interesting story. Forgot his place this morning. Yeah, and he was just so excited about being captain of Australia. That's right. Let's get this under! The he's, he's got him on now, that's what matters. A bit of a drop pull there. New Zealand. <laughs> that is a bit of a drop pull. <laughs> New Zealand with the opportunity to punch it in here. Yeah, here we go. 82, Luca Mercer is walking to the disc. It's well covered. Yeah, smart move from the mark there to shut off that first option. Uh, unlucky there for Keys. Ended up uh, isolated in that front corner, and uh, yeah, sounds unfortunate there for, for the Australian team. Oh well. The. Um, you know that's kind of an unavoidable part of uh, part of a, a game. You know, we've all dropped pools. We have all dropped pools <laughs> in high stakes games. I've I've dropped pools, <laughs> so Johnny Cage shouldn't worry about it too much. As Australia call a timeout. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not on tape, Mike. Yeah, I think we'll um we'll be able to <laughs> forgive that one. So New Zealand now. With a mistake from Australia, they capitalise. They're up 4-1. Yeah, that, that happened pretty quickly, didn't it? Mm. It's definitely a bit of a study of contrast here. Obviously, we are um, bringing you this game from Sydney, Australia. So maybe understandable that Australia's got a bit more uh, infrastructure around the team, a bit, bit of a larger you know, coaching staff, <laughs> more players, yep. just a bit more everything, really. New Zealand, by contrast, even in the warm-ups earlier, Gussie, you would have noticed. I it did. A, it was a, it was a contrast. Casual. They, you know, talking about what the structures are going to be, a, a, a light warm-up, um, just uh, also a lot of, you know, self-managed time. Just go out, throw, do what you need to do to get ready. Mm. Um, the Australians, by contrast, a real study and discipline. A lot of footwork drills, a lot of movement, a lot of yep. speed, a lot of um, disc in hand. A big team warmer. A big all, team. All 30 of the, uh, the, uh, the Thunder Boys and the Australia A squad were participating in that warm-up. And on the sideline as well. That's why you're getting so much, so much noise from the Australian team. Mm. But uh, the system's working for New Zealand at the moment. That's all you can say. Sure is. They don't need any local knowledge, clearly, to start this game strong. Not at all. So thanks to... Um, New Zealand Ultimate and to uh, Ultimate Australia for um, for putting these together and also bringing you the stream today. 
Uh, we hope you enjoy if you're watching it live or watching it back on replay. As uh, the Australians get ready for another offensive point, their third in a row. So we have talked about this breeze a little bit, Max. It's picking up a touch. Paper's gone everywhere. Grass test is telling us that the wind is going from the camera to the opposite side of the field. A little bit left right, but not heaps. Yeah. Oh yeah, behind the magician's curtain. Alan Kidd has the disc. He's got Paddy Graham streaking deep. He's going to look it off and hit Hodgson underneath. Who is going to hit Paddy Graham? The Pat Tower. Unfortunately, a bit of a difficult read. Maybe just out the back there as well. Yeah, the, um, the Aussie boys are throwing some pretty zippy shapes to the end zone. Probably in an attempt to um, stop it getting caught by the wind. But uh, there's still those passes are getting pushed and probably a little deeper than they're expecting at the moment. Seen a couple of turns in that, that kind of area. So New Zealand's walking it up to the front of the end zone line. First move, a little bit of a pick creator, but definitely isolates number eight, Whitlock, in that break space. Looking for a dump move. Nice defense there, but... Uh, Whitlock gets the disc back. There's a bit of a gust now. Oh, but it's picked up in the stack by New Zealand. They see a deep shot and it's up. It's floaty. There'll be a few players Paddy under Graham this is one. underneath it for Australia. Oh, but he's been beaten to it. Really so nice their offense again. Paddy Graham streaking deep. He's going from end zone to end zone, this boy. He's got steps as well. But he's been looked off by Everest, who's hitting Kidd on the underneath. Pat Graham, an absolute workhorse out there. He's getting it under. Looking break side. Fortunately, it doesn't come off. Yeah, just a little much. As we said, that that's a throw in directly into the wind there. And, uh, you could had a few options there on the break side, though. Maybe could have gotten a bit of flow if that pass had come off. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't to be. New Zealand to pick up the disc. Number 49, Campbell Newman. No relation. <laughs> uh, upper line pass, but uh, as they say in the business, arguably never in. Everett's going to pick up the disc. It's a dump. It's a schmick mark there. Off. Graham on the around. Oh, gets up big. The big boys and sells number eight on a fake. Hodgson on the doorstep here. Oh, great hand block. That is an mark. awesome block. That's a point-saving block there from the New Zealanders. That's number That's 22. Rolf, Rolf, I believe, a returner for New Zealand. So New Zealand gets another chance in that corner. 66 putting a great mark on for Australia, but gets off a nice break. Oh, and it's up. It's up to a Westpac Ooh. Graham. No to be seen, but Australia get the block anyway. It's Everest about, to pick up the disc. About six Sorry, players no. under that one. <laughs> it's Hodgson to pick up the disc. Initiating move from Tommy Butler doesn't come off. Oh, ends up with a nice little reset or a nice little pressure valve release. Fortunate there. Miski there from Hodgson. Yeah. Had a couple of high stall situations and his dumps were not particularly forthcoming. So nice little battle here going on between Linklater and number 66. It's up again. Oh, has he caught that? There's discussion about it, but it looks like it was out. I'd given up on that disc, but Rolf hadn't. Been a few miscues in this point, Max. Yeah, absolutely. The, um... That they're looking for the similar shots each time. Looks more like execution than, than structural issues at the moment. As the Diag Tommy Butler comes hitting up the line. Oh, oh, it's a great grab from Butler. Looks at the immediate centering pass to Hodgson. Hey, that's a beauty, Hodgson. Back yourself, 
Just unfortunate there that uh, Man Mountain couldn't come down with it. <laughs> Pat, Pat Graham is quickly becoming this commentator's favourite player out there on the field. So, New Zealand, another opportunity. Easy dish off. Comes under for number 20. And they're now on the commentary booth sideline. Working it up the open side. Sees a deep shot. Hits it on a break. And that will play it's nicely. Unfortunately there for the Australians. They had a few opportunities. New Zealand persevering. Yeah, it's a beautiful away. throw from Whitlock. Really using his, uh, his long frame to, uh, to pivot around uh, Graham, who's not an easy man to pivot around. He is not. So, Australia digging themselves a bit of a hole. It, it has blown out to 5-1. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there were some nice, uh, nice defensive plays here as we just watch it again on replay. Just hits that beautiful backhand at weight. Great throw, isn't it? Could have easily been caught by both receivers there. Very different uh, approaches to these line calls as well, Max. Australia have the entire team out there. New Zealand, just the seven players and the coach. Yeah, very true. Now, I mean, I'm on I'm on record on a few streams before as being not a massive fan of the full team kneel. Gus, it's not it's not my style personally. Not your style? Uh, no, but there is a value, especially you know, with these younger players developing, hearing more line calls, and you, know, you get a bit of experience in. It can really help you, and it's nice to have the support of the boys or the girls. It sure is. It sure is nice to have the support of the boys or the girls. So, Australia, back out on offense. Moving left to right on your screen. Send us to Tom Boyle. It's a bit of a zone look here from New Zealand. Ooh. Oh, they Lally put both captains on. Nick Lally. It's a beautiful upline pass to Nichols on the doorstep here. Alan Keith. Sorry, that's Eichner. Lachlan Eichner scores the goal. Australians rush to the field, and that's 5 2. Easy as you like, Gussie. We've got a game on our hands. We've got a series on our hands, Max. <laughs> Plenty of frisbee still to come. Very true. It will never once and for all be decided who has won the frisbee. That's, uh, that's a nice goal there. New Zealand mixes it up a little bit with his own and uh, Australia makes quick work of it. Bit of a zone look from New Zealand, Max. Mm. Seemed to quickly torn to shreds there by the Australian offence. Yeah. That's a quick movement. Certainly, and I mean, you know as well as anybody, Gussie, that uh, those penetrating passes, mm. especially that one up the sideline, once that's done, it's pretty much lights out for a zone unless, uh, unless they can hustle up field. So... Just a bit of some technical adjustments <laughs> uh, happening on the stream. The angle of Max's microphone, not quite where we wanted it to be. Incorrect. I'm sure you noticed at home. Mm. Alrighty, so it'll be the New Zealanders now. And uh, I'm sure the Aussies will be wanting to generate a little bit of pressure here. Need to start clawing and back at this point in the game. We're playing to 80 minutes, folks. Games to 15. Gonna make a bold prediction, Max. I think we're gonna see some zone here. Oh, okay. Well, the pool is out. Okay. It's not looking great for me. Gonna look yeah. a bit of a, a match defense look here. Yeah, not ideal, Gussie. Also, not ideal a pool going out no. when you yeah you need one in. Well, you, you really want it in, don't you? So here they go. It's uh, number 82, Mercer with the disc. Oh, oh, wow. Hits the Australian defender's face marking. Boom! Oh, <laughs> bang with the run through D, but there's a foul call there by Whitlock. Yeah. Be a bit of discussion. Bang really did. Gave it a whack, hey? Put on, put on the wheels as well, didn't he? Mm. A bit of as we uh, watch here. it again, here it comes on replay. Oh. 
it's uh, it's a tough one to see on the replay. There certainly is there's a little bit of um, resistance in the hand. You can see that as the D is made. But um, it'll be up to the players on the field to decide whether, again, the catch was uh, was just starting or whether it was just finishing. Right. Mm, yeah. <coughs> it's a line ball. You, you have to... You have to say on balance that the, the D looks like it's in progress before the catch is completed. It does look like contact is made before the catch, but the resolution is an uncontested foul, I believe. Whitlock has the disc. And uh, the power of that defense looks like they, <laughs> they've, they've bent the disc in half. He did give it a whack, didn't he? Yeah. Using a fresh new Trans Tasman disc, which are purchasable for uh, only $20. <laughs> so uh, help support the boys and girls. And we're back. There's a pit called. And disc is back in. Oh, a little bit of uncertainty there, yep. Potential violation there, Max. Mm, certainly. The big Vs. And uh, here we go. New Zealand taps it back in. It's a nice around. Again, he's got it in that inside grip. Oh! Straight over the commentary booth. I thought I was on there, Max, with a, a crowd pleaser, but it's gone straight over my head. Pat Graham whacked that with some real force. Probably could have caught it. Yeah, I mean, well, certainly the enthusiasm, <laughs> they want to D it. They don't want to catch it. The sideline didn't want to catch it, did they? They want to D it. Uh, Hagen's picking up the disc on the sideline. Right in front of the commentary booth. Keep making the first move, but he swings it across. That is a great look over to Jono Jones. And grass. There are a few options. Hits Feng. Oh. Dump move. Oh, it's a well worked dump set. Touched off the hand by number eight. Jones straight back to Feng. Hits Kid. Oh. oh, huge layer there from Kid. The New Zealanders come away with the D. It's going to be number eight, Nicholas Whitlock, to pick it up. And again, here they are, New Zealand, on this sideline. Got a, deep, got a deep shot coming. Oh, lovely. Julio's Five giving him a bit of space up deep. And these New Zealanders decide to take advantage of it. Rolf Holsters. Looks to his dump. Well covered, Paddy oh. G! Comes through again. What I tell you, Max? Very smart. Graham there just, just baited that a little bit and um, got the throw off, got the block. Hagen walking very calmly to the disc. Kid making the initiating move. Oh, hits Fang on the inside. Is that a break? It's a rugby catch. That's a that is a break. Five three. Both teams had their chances that one, but uh, nicely put in there by the uh, by the Australians in the end. Exciting point. Certainly was from that very first initiating movement. As we watch it again, Fang just rugby catches it. Sometimes the bread basket is, uh, is the way to go, Max. So I've always said that. Two really nice blocks there from um, Patrick Graham. And uh, a great point from Fang. They uh, are yep. very, very close to a D um, on the first look and then eventually ended up with it in the end zone. Now, um, just to take you really behind the magician's curtain, we can hear our own commentary. We uh, can. Yeah, but... Uh, on about a one minute delay? I, th I think there's actually two different delays going on. Oh yeah? Yeah, I can hear myself what I've just said and then what I said a minute ago nice. as well. And it's good stuff. Mm, yeah. So if you do have any feedback for us, please, you can feel free to tweet at, you know, Mr. Max Halden um, and uh, and let us know on the, the stream and we'll, we'll be here all weekend bringing you the uh, this Trans-Tasman test series. So if you want to hear more of something or less of something else, please let us know. Uh, and you should be hearing a few voices uh, rotating through on the stream, which are look, looking forward to bringing you all day here, Saturday and Sunday, wherever right. you are in Australia, New Zealand, and or the world. <laughs> Tommy Boyle with the rip of a pull. Nice bit of float. Australians are running hard in pursuit. Now this is a bit of a, a poachy look, isn't it, Max? Very much so. And uh, New Zealand's worked it through this one before, but Australians may be a bit locked into the disc. Lely uh, given number 20, McCowan, a bit of love on the mark. Goes for the Hail Mary football as well there, Lely. 
Number 22, Rolf with it. That's a high Aye. backhand, a bit floaty. Oh, and body's blocks. underneath it there for the Australians. Welly to pick it up. He's got Hodgson back immediately and gets it again. Lovell looking for that underpass. Not on. Tries to catch the hat on the way through. <laughs> Boiler looking under. Oh, it's a good D there from... Is that, is that number, the man? It's number nine. I think it Driscoll. is. Driscoll. Driscoll. Again, just a block machine. It's a D machine, that, that boy. Looks like they're going to try a horror here in the end zone. Bit of float. And unfortunately, I think the wind just uh, just cost the New Zealanders a goal there. Yeah, I think you may be right. In his face. Oh, as the New Zealand tank goes flying into the New Zealand girls team. But back to the action on the field. Lover with the disc. It's a great look. Mm. Oh, maybe not. From my angle, it looked absolutely fantastic. But unfortunately, I think it just drifted out the sideline there. Yeah, we've talked about this wind going sort of away to the away sideline. That um, that really just pushed it. it. Needed to be a lot flatter for that one. Mm. Hmm. So are they going to set up in this zony, poachy look? Do you think? Yeah. It looks like they're going to stick to just match for this first move here. And yeah, as the New Zealanders come out in a horror, first one we've seen of the game, to isolate that deep space, which up. they certainly try and hit. It's a three-on-one situation, three-on-two situation. Oh. oh, and Driscoll, my boy Driscoll, How comes down with it. Did that happen? Lock. And Driscoll again. That is a great point for Driscoll. Killing it. Wow. Yeah, as you say, three on one, and really three on two, but three on two. Huge grab from Driscoll. Almost four on one, because he had to sky his own teammate there as well. <laughs> he really did. And really he may have been the shortest the person in that pack too. As we it's watch, well. oh, as we see Driscoll's Jeez. really great block to kick it all off. It's not about the quadruple happiness in that point, I reckon. Mm. And uh, interesting for New Zealand, guy. as we watch it again on replay, you can see Driscoll finds the spot, goes right underneath it, and oh. somehow... <laughs> You know can't what? even. I think he thought that he dropped it. I think so too. Just with the the, the look on his face, it looked like his arm was just there. Yeah. And it happened to still be there. Clenched the hands. He was as surprised as we were. Bit of a give go. Caught the goal. What a great Saturday morning for Driscoll. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Um, yeah, Driscoll will be very happy with that. Just and talk about the read on that. Just got to the right spot, stood underneath it, and you know the reality of being someone who's not as tall as other people. You know, you just got to get to the spot. You got to do your best. You got to stand your bit, get it, and then sometimes everybody else misses it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. It is six three, half at eight for this game today. We're, we are playing games for fifteen. Yeah, thirty five minutes in. Oh. The pull does barely even makes it. Probably doesn't make it over halfway. So Hagen on that dump pass. Straight to Everest. Oh, Hagen looking for the upper line. Doesn't come off, but a good swing there from Prendergast. Alan Kidd. It's John o Jones in the end zone. That is a as a well-worked offensive point there for the Australians. Yeah, solid grab from Alan the Kid Kid there. <laughs> and uh a bit of a anything you can do, I can do better there, Gussie. Australians also come out in their first horror and yeah. uh, certainly don't exploit that deep space, but uh, they didn't really have much given that pull. Right. As we watch it again, nice little movement here and then a filling pass from the, uh, the far player in that horror. Well executed dump set. Yeah, really nice. And it, look at this quick release from Kid. Oh, squeezes it in. Squeezes it in. Crams it in the cram hole. That's it. Six four. So do you reckon we'll see that uh, this poachy set again here, Gussie? I'm going to make another bold claim. I think we're going to see a more traditional zone, mm. more conventional zone here. Interesting. Three three one. That kind of thing. Yeah. Four two one. It would be exciting to see. You have to say the Australians at the moment, just on that help set, maybe uh, getting a little bit caught looking at the players rather than keeping their eyes on the disc because both of those initiating passes we've seen from the New Zealand team have come with Australian defenders with their back 
to the player. So, yeah, they may be wise to um, to mix it up a little bit and uh, see if they can't stuff New Zealand with something a little bit different. A little bit different. Tommy Boyle is with the pull. And it looks a good one. Hard chase coming down from the Australians. As uh, number 49, Camel, gets it. Another deep shot from the New Zealanders. That one is Ooh. just unfortunately out of reach. It looked like hands too there, Gussie. For uh, for Fitzpatrick Cockrum. Uh, a strong family name a there. strong, strong name. I would love have. to see that boy's crest. Mm. <laughs> And it looks like New Zealand's gone with a, a huck and zone situation because here they are in a cup. Well, they heard you, Gussie. I, I did say they'd be zone. <laughs> I'm technically correct. As Boiler loves a bit of zone, oh, this boy. Hits the gap. So does Nick Lely. And the two of them just doing a bit of give-go action, working it a little bit. Boyle and Lely running it at the moment. Hammer over the top. Tom Boyle, some of the nicest hammers in Australian oh. Ultimate. Blake Nichols with the disc. He's got a few options. Back to Lely. And for a bit of a give-go here, Lely with keys. Yeah, he looks for the backhand blade over the top. Boyle on the continuation. He's going to hammer it across. Oh, mm. not his nicest hammer there, Tom Boyle. And New Zealand say, shame on you if you fool me once, etc. <laughs> Bullet to number 42. Oh, good, oh, good grab there. Really From solid Whitlock. grab to keep it alive. Looking for that high release flick. It's beautiful. Woodlock hits it. Woodlock Number hits three, it. Fitzpatrick Cockrum. Well, straight back to Woodlock. Again. You've got to think that uh, Australians have got to be worried about that high release flick from the New Zealanders. They're knocking on the door now, New Zealand. They're going to send it back, though. There's a travel call. Fitzpatrick Cockrum. A lot of movement upfield from the New Zealanders as the dump set gets initiated. Still looking nicely for those insides. Oh. Bit of a gust, but it's handled. Good luck. Watch for the high release flick. Yeah, will it's it come in? High. Oh, he goes the hammer instead, and it comes off. Hey, he's, hey, got, he's got, got them all. He's got them all. Good luck showing off his arsenal of throws. Yeah, really nice play from the New Zealanders. Very uh, calm on their own end zone line. And, uh, yeah, the zone... Uh, ends up being effective for them as the uh, pass to the end zone is broken up for the Australians. We are inching towards half, 7-4. New Zealand can uh, get a break here, they'll, they'll come away with half, mm. half, half at eight. Australians, of course, be doing everything in their power to, to work in a nice, clean offensive point like they had last time around, Max. It's true. There's some nice movement there from, from both teams. They, that very first, uh, very first Australian offensive move was pretty nice. The uh, the backhand blade from Nicolelli, the hammer from uh, <coughs> Tommy Boyle. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry for the Australians. <laughs> I'm just so in love with Whitlock's throws. I can't get them off my mind. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. New Zealand still making some technical adjustments. Their, uh, their coach giving them a little bit of advice saying, hey, Think about faking a bit. <laughs> fake some backhands, maybe fake some forehands, and then throw the opposite. That is how faking works, Max. Should be a coach. One day. Yeah, really, underneath the flight path here in um, Sydney's beautiful inner west. It's a nice spot, isn't it? Yeah, it is really beautiful. Solid centre of suburbia. But enough of that, Max. Let's talk about the Frisbee. Pull is received by Australia. I think it's just going to drift out for a brick. It's unfortunate. I think on a still day, that would have been perfect. Mm. Friend and foe, the wind out there. Mm. A double-edged sword. First cut coming from Hodgson to the break side, I think. That's, that's done well. He's got a, a look deep that he hits. Bit of pace on it. Oh, that's all right. It's going to come off. Number 55, Lachlan Eichner. 
Coming away with the catch there from Hodgson's Huck. And coaches have to be happy with that one. A uh, flawless offence from the Australians. A quick flawless offence. And suddenly, it's 7-5, Max. It is suddenly 7-5. That inside just sat perfectly. Uh, the height was probably the threat there. If it, if it got caught by the wind, it could be in real trouble. But uh, kept it nice and low and flat. Knew this receiver had tons of space on that side. Acres of space. Acres of space there for Eichner. Great deep movement. So knocking on the door of half is New Zealand, but uh, Australia will probably want to peg back a few more before, before we have the break. Mm. Certainly, psychologically, the difference between 8-5 uh, and 8-6 can be fairly significant. It's huge. Even if it is just one point, Gussie. That's right. Sometimes it's all you need, you know? A bit of a, a, a kickstart. Now, we are going to see Australia coming out on defence, of course. I'm not going to embarrass myself again, Max, with a, with a prediction. But here's a fact. Pat Graham is pulling it. And it's high and floaty. Might just drift out again for a brick. Oh, well received by Cron there. Yeah, not the first pass Cron has uh, <laughs> no. managed to pick up from the sideline. No, he didn't celebrate that one, though. Very casual. Must have known he was on camera. Whitlock with the disc. Now, what would you do if you're on the mark, Max? I would need a high, a high left hand, not a high right hand. Is probably oh, the you're kidding issue me. at the moment. They've, they've come out in a zone. The one point I haven't called it. Here it is, Gussie, the one that you talked about. New Zealand just working around the handlers at the moment. Not looking for those penetrative throws. No, and Lily's floating on that side to try and find the break. Oh, yeah. enough pressure generated by the Australians. Lely in a rush to pick away. it up, but uh, ends options up streaking through. Back to Lely. Got a few options on the break side there. Yes, and he's hit it. That's a great throw. Seven six max. That's a break for the Australians. Seven six. They keep the half alive. New Zealand's still knocking on the door, but maybe Australia just uh, just got sneaking little, up behind them. Got that little latch yep. on the on the inside, that one with the little chain. Yep. Uh, New I Zealand kind of see through the door, but yep. Australia's like, nah, can't come in just yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to extend analogy. the metaphor. It's a good analogy, Max. <laughs> we'll see if they play that zone again, I suppose. I would. I'd play it again. Mm-hmm. You know, well. It is really stunted the uh, the downfield movement there, I think. Forced, yeah. it, forced it back amongst the handlers and uh, enough pressure over time, as we know, causes turns. Mm -hmm. Certainly. And, I mean, a lot of... You know, the New Zealand has New Zealand has been running pretty crisp dump sets, you have to say. Mm. Uh, but certainly goals-wise, they've, um, they've gotten off a lot of deep shots that have been fairly damaging for the Australians. So, uh, I think playing a zone, making them throw a few more passes, especially with this unpredictable wind. Mm. Good strategy. It's a pretty good option. Hmm? Mm. <laughs> yes. Just, uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh... Australians now making their final adjustments. It's a nice pull. It's in the field. Fielded it in their own end zones. Oh! Ooh. Big chase down from number four, they Prendergast. Are they are playing that zone again. It's a bit of a pommy setup. 4 2 1. Forcing to the, the far sideline. Oh, and <laughs> once again, <laughs> Whitlock's throws. You can throw them high, you can throw them low. Um, but they're on the sideline now. This is where the Australians want them. Whitlock, back in that corner. Not a lot of movement downfield, really. Yeah, not a lot going on. Quite still there for New Zealand. New Zealand is happy to wear the pressure here. As they go further, further backwards. Whitlock might need to uh, generate a bit of magic here. I think we're now entering Callahan country, Max. It's, oh, it's true. New Zealand, keep cheeky, keep goes there. And there nice it is. Nice big hammer over the top. Whitlock looks Rolf for the game breaker. 
gets it. The leading pass. Australians can't get there. Hold them up on the end zone line. Back to Whitlock. Uh, uh, and all class. Cool calm and collected there from Whitlock. Yeah, look, it had to happen, Gussie. Uh, somebody needed to generate something that was a little bit special, and uh, Whitlock more than provided. That's right, it is half time now. 8 6. Though as we said, 8 6 very different to 8 5, so the Australians won't be too disheartened, I don't think. No. And it's a beautiful hammer on that cross field. And well done on Rolf on the continuation as well. Once you, yeah. once you break through that uh, cup, you really want to keep it moving. Yeah, two passes to get you 60 metres is a. Um, a good feeling for a, a zone offensive line. Nice. So, takeaways from the first half, Gussie. Look, it's um, it's been great play from both teams. I think uh, a bit of a nervous start, maybe. We've had some uh, high turnover points, some punting into into the wind has created a few. Pack, pack grabs. Mm. Um, had some some great individual performances from the likes of Driscott, Driscott, uh, and of course Whitlock mm. from New Zealand. And uh, look, it's too early, too early to call this one. I reckon, Max. I reckon uh, it's a game of two halves. Uh -huh. um, some more cliches. Yep. Um, Unfortunately, the score does sort of reflect well the play roughly. I suppose. I guess that's why you have a score. Mm. Yes, the um, New Zealanders certainly, the dump sets have been very crisp. Although Australia has been executing decently as well. But uh, you do get a sense that uh, Australia probably needs some of their, their big boys to really start executing a little bit more flawlessly, a little bit more... Uh, to get a bit more razzle dazzle in the team to uh, maybe generate something, some bit of a tum bit of a comeback here. Yeah, I'd like a bit of razzle dazzle. Hmm. Always love a bit of razzle dazzle. Hmm. So as we go to half, we've got a uh, another game coming up at ten thirty, Gussie between uh, Terra and uh, Kahu. Kahu, that's it. Of course, we haven't even said Katipo. Catapo. Catapo? Is that Catapo the boys. correct? Thank you very much. I believe so. Catapo. Spiders. Native New Zealand spider. I presume. <laughs> Based on the uh, the logo, I, I reckon that's a pretty safe bet. Mm -hmm. But, uh, hey, if we're wrong, tweet in. Mr. Max Howden. Mm -hmm. Let us know. Like me on Instagram. <laughs> Always trying to get the socials up. <laughs> like me on Instagram. So, do... You Interesting to see New Zealand again taking just taking the, a seat at half time. They're um, they're circled up, they're huddled, they're relaxed. I'm sure the um, part of the thinking is we don't want to burn ourselves out mm. because um, as you may have noticed, folks, New Zealand team's a little bit lighter on than the Australian team. Aussies probably got about 20 boys running out there, whereas uh, New Zealanders just a squad of 16 could make it over across the ditch. Across the Dutch, yes. Didn't we have a moratorium on New Zealand accents? Oh, we did actually, yeah. Apologies. <laughs> You'll hear no more of that. <laughs> or references to Crowded House and whether or not they're really from New Zealand. Oh, really? We're not going to do that? Oh, we can do that, I, I, was I suppose. I was saving that for later. <laughs> Half time of game three, maybe. Yeah, we when the, the real crunch time. We do have eight games that you can watch. Of the uh, of the weekend, of course, mm. and stream back from the comfort of your own home on Ultimate Australia's YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, all Australia's national events, of course, now are streamed on uh, Ultimate Australia uh, by Mike Palmer and his uh, wonderful team. So, make sure you uh, you subscribe for all the latest updates. If you want to keep your finger on the pulse of Australian Ultimate, subscribe. And I mean, who? Why wouldn't you? Why? Yeah, why wouldn't you? Also worth be talking a little bit about fashion on the field here. Mm, I think so, Gussie. Yeah. Uh, Australians, of course, repping uh, the new style of Australian uniform, uh, provided by Five Ultimate, the uh, apparel sponsor of uh, 
Ultimate Australia. Yeah, I like it. Uh, they've also got, uh, as you can see, the blue daywalkers, which uh, every single boy and girl were wearing when I arrived at the field this morning. It was a sea of blue, um, which is great to see. What are your thoughts on three-quarter length skins, Max? What are my thoughts on three-quarter length skins? Yeah. Uh, I'm personally against them, uh, but I respect everybody's right to make the fashion choices that, that they need to. <laughs> okay. um, I just think it's a bizarre choice of skin length. Why not the full length or the half length? I feel like that covers off pretty much all the options. No one's ever like, oh, my upper calf could really use a little bit more compression. Yeah. Mm. I've never heard anybody say that. I think from a fashion point of view, though, mm -hmm. it can really work. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, if you become known as three-quarter skins guy, <laughs> it could be your thing. Every yeah. ultimate player above a certain level needs a thing. Needs a thing, yeah. And, uh, you know, you just look at former junior player, Bucket Hat Bill Foreman, <laughs> you know. Bucket Hat Bill. Yeah. Some of the great up-and-coming players, really iconic. And a little bit of behind the scenes, uh, you can see the, uh, this is our commentary or setup. Well, that's enough of that. Let's look at the players. <laughs> so it'll be Australia coming out on offense. I'm excited for this second half, Max. Me too, actually. It really sets the tone. Winning that first game it's, uh, will really put the pressure on one team or another to, uh, to come back for the second one, you know? can only lose one. That's right. And th they say it, it, it's incredibly difficult to uh, beat the same team twice you know, in sports. Mm. Um, it's true. Three matches here, so... Someone's got to lose twice. <laughs> yeah. uh, Nick Lelly. Uh, oh. yeah, he's going to punt that to Paddy, Paddy G. Pat Graham and Whitlock, my two favourite players out there on the field, in a matchup. Oh! oh! And Eichner sneaks through with the goal. <laughs> Immediately called a goal there by Whitlock. That is a clutch backup from Eichner there. You know, you can trust your teammates, Max, but there's also a lot of merit in not trusting your teammates and following the play, and I think that's what <laughs> Eichner did there. Very well said, Gussie. As we watch it again. Now, a lazier player would have given up about here, but Eichner oh. stays with it. Wow, and as we slow it down, just keeps that oh. knee in bounds. Nice. It's a, it's a tight call. But... Uh, Whitlock gives him the benefit of the doubt. And there you go. It wasn't, uh, wasn't quite the crisp offensive point we saw them, uh, saw them score just before half, Gussie, but hey, got the job done. Uh, well, did have a, an open undercut and a, a relatively open deep shot. Maybe just an execution mm. thing. Uh, there was a bit, of, a bit of a kerfuffle there in the end zone. It's true. Well, you would say probably 100% of the time if you see Patrick Graham going deep, you're probably going to hit it. I'd, I'd say that. I'd throw it. That's a rough statistic. Tommy Boyle letting it rip. He's going to receive the pull. Here's oh. Whitlock, who's underneath it. That's, That's a, a great, great pull. pull. That is elite. Oh. And Whitlock lets it drop to the ground. Australia ready, set up in this help, in this junky set. Whitlock surveys the field. It's his open side dump. It's Nauman on the sideline. The Australians just trading players. Yeah, the Australians seem happy to let it move. Julio oh. with the D. Got plenty of options. Hits Boyle backwards. Yeah, good Boyle. That's a great throw from Tommy Boyle. A great cut from Jono Jones there. Mm, and, um, and good D from really the whole team really stuffed that uh, New Zealand offense. And uh, it was Hannah. And Max, I'm no mathematician, but I believe that will make the score an even 8-8. Eight eight. You are correct, Gussie. So we're back to evens. Back Easy to, evens. to like. Start again. Neil all. You know, we talked a lot about the difference between 8-5 and 8-6. <laughs> there's, no, there's no huge difference between 8-8. Eight, eight Eight and eight. Eight eight. Oh, you mean eight myself. all and eight eight seven? Is that what yeah. you're trying to say? It's but the difference between 
evens and a lead mm. psychologically uh, again psychologically, yeah, it's, it's great greater point. it's greater than just the sum of the numbers you know it's a great point max some of the numbers is of course 16 now where it was 15 in the last point mm. it's more maths for you love it the aussies look uh looking confident they are they are it, it, different dynamic coming out of half i think mm -hmm. um difficult one for the new zealanders to be up at half instantly level at half mm. in the space of what feels like oh, two minutes it not, just happened not, didn't not it? many throws at all really no are a number of throws no more than really four that the Australians have had to complete. <laughs> so the New Zealanders now. Another opportunity on offense. Maybe a miscue there from the New Zealanders, but it's Whitlock who has it in the f middle of the field. Australians coming out in the zone. Whitlock taking that anchor position. Kid on the mark. Oh, and a miscommunication. Oh, That's a tough one. Australia. Link later there, just uh, not seeing that Whitlock had striked up into the cup. Australia on the doorstep. Hodgson walking to the disc with confidence. No dump. Uh, and uh, no players yet isolated. A few cuts coming in that open side. Oh, yes. I like the smackdown. Probably <laughs> should have caught it, but I like the... I like the whack. Again, the, these are both teams very enthusiastic about getting a block. That was number three. Fitzpatrick Cochran. Oh, it's a great throw oh, through the cup. Wow. Oh, we're in Callahan country here. Set level. Ooh. And I just think there's going to be some discussion there. Uh, I believe they're going to probably discuss a simultaneous catch. Which would, of course, go to the offense. Offense pass. would retain the disc if that is the case. As we watch it again, just tips off the hands and then goes way, way up. Hung up there for a while. Lovell has position. Oh, I think he's getting his hand on it first, but it is very difficult to tell. Yeah, tough one. The glove as well definitely decreases the contrast. <laughs> yeah, you sort of, you probably have to say that it looks like Australian guy sort of got his hand to it first, but maybe... Uh, Maybe New Zealand was a bit snappier, snappier on the closing of the hand. Yeah, without the benefit of the uh, the instant replay, you see how it could be difficult for the players out there. Mm. I think maybe the best resolution is to send it back. And certainly their agreement is... Oh. Well, it's a bit unclear, to be perfectly yeah, honest. I think they decided that the New Zealand player had it in his hand, and he's going to... But, I mean, it's a catch, but could it be a Pyrrhic victory here? Just, they're... Deep, as you say, in Callahan country. Passports stamped. Yeah, might, might, might win the battle but lose the war here as they do turn it over. Good luck. Unfortunately, just uh, putting a little bit too much downward angle on that one. So Australians will get another chance. Same setup as before. Hodgson with the disc. Nichols in dump. And he's going to look for it up the line. Nicely oh, covered there by Fitz Fitzpatrick Cockrum. Uh... Travel, of course, hashtag not a stoppage. It's really uh, sucked the momentum out of it, hasn't it, Max? Uh, yes, and they still seem to still be discussing it. A violation called. But uh, it'll give the Australians a chance on zero. Set up. See if they can execute. Looking for his dump quite early. Oh, and it's... There's a nice a round. Oh, he's done well. I'm not sure if that was his intended receiver there, Hodgson, but he has found Kid in the end zone. Alan the Kid, Kid. Yeah, it's a nice, nice score there from the Kid. <laughs> so, Australia, we're back. And they now take the lead for the first time in the game, Gussie. 9-8. Mm. It's a good time to be in the lead, but of course, not the crucial time to be in the lead. <laughs> Which is at the end of the game. Game starts for 15, so there's six points that the Australians need to get to close this one off. Won't be easy though. The wind is picking up a little bit, Max. Mm. My legs are getting a little bit cold. Yeah. 
Oh, fun fact uh, about Alex, the uh, sorry, Alan, the kid, uh, kid, he's uh, he's actually competed at state and national level for long jump. I can see that. Mm. And suddenly with that layout that we saw oh, yeah, earlier, well, he he did actually. He really sprung out, mm. didn't he? Really I wonder exploded. if he went front first when he was competing in long jump. <laughs> Well, you don't see it very often, <laughs> but uh, sometimes an unconventional technique is the best technique. Mm. We're in a timeout, by the way, folks. Uh, <laughs> New Zealand just trying to steady the ship a little bit here. Oh, my um, my headphones have only just come on, Gussie. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Now I've been on the whole time. No, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I didn't really. Oh. And they've gone off again. But, you know, yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, now I feel really in the commentary booth. Quality's going to improve from here, folks. Well, why don't we take an opportunity, Max, during this timeout, which is about to end. I really missed the, miss the boat there. <laughs> to get to know some of the players. Yeah, why not? Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Well, well maybe Lachlan we Eichner. Mm. He's, uh, he's, he's been having a good game. We've been talking about him a bit. He's only been playing Frisbee for seven months, according to the uh, documentation we have here. Impressive. One of, um, one of only two South Australians that we know of. That we're aware of. On the, um, <laughs> on the team. <laughs> and... Uh, They'll, uh, they'll be very happy. Uh, we've got a few Adelaide or oh, South Australian boys in the um, on the technical side of the stream today, and uh, they'll be excited to watch Adelaide play in the AFL Grand Final. Of course, remember, you can watch the the football later <laughs> on repeat. You can and just watch the the frisbee live. Well, my my palm has actually liberated a TV. Uh, that he's brought down to the fields to uh, watch the game. Yeah, so we, we, can, we can give you score updates if you're a massive AFL fan, but also want to support the boys and girls uh, in the green and gold or in the black and white. That's right. AFL happens every year. This trans Tasman is a, is a, uh, a two-year event. so Biannual, if you will. Biannual. Sure. So New Zealand here. And uh, Australia packs the zone away. Straight away, deep shot. Oh, Boyle with Boyle the block. With the disc. Lily looks under, immediately goes deep, and it's going to go. Cap to cap. It's a real zipper. Oh, and the layout. He's actually tipped it up in the air, and the New Zealand player had to finish the job, but uh, he did very well there, Lely. Yeah. Uh, Linehead Lely loves a layout. Mm. It's a great alliterative opportunity there with Lely. Yeah, I love it. But uh, I, might, I might retire that one. <laughs> Use that again. Oh, Ooh. picked up again, <laughs> bootstraps. <laughs> That's a, that's a lawnmower. Do your shoelaces while you're down there. Whitaker sends it. Got a few options deep, but I think it's just going to drift over the top. Kylo. Ooh. Oh, unfortunate drop there, drop from, there Kylo. from Kylo. Won't be happy with that one when he watches it on the replay. <laughs> so it's Boyle again, and uh, the Australians will come out in this diag again. Not sure what Nick Lowe is doing, but he definitely doesn't have a defender on him at the moment. Oh, they're setting up in the zone. Yes, so Australia pulls out of the diag. Tom Boyle looking for a hammer opportunity, I reckon. I would be. Gets a nice so little dish off. Tommy Butler. Straight back to Boyle. The Tommy B is working together. Unfortunately, can't quite get it through the cup. And it's Whitaker, the man who can throw it all, picking up the disc. Oh, open oh. side. Oh. oh. Just too much there from Whitaker. I reckon the winds played a factor in that one as well. Absolutely. Lely wants a, oh, he's a deep it. shot. We could be on here, Max. Oh, Just Paddy Graham fields it on the sideline. He's a real talent, isn't he? So it's Whitlock again. Centers it. Burns. Whitlock surveys the field. Doesn't like the unders that he sees. There is a hammer. Unconventional he choice to Rolf in the end zone. He comes to do down it with it. Despite the pressure from Feng, wow, he's and landed quite hard, unfortunately. Yeah, Feng uh, 
really wound up that uh, that he really defensive did. block. He likes a black. He does. He likes him and a lot of other players. Him and a lot of other players here, loving a good whack. But uh, maybe that wind up actually impinged his ability to block it. Potentially, potentially. Wanted to put a bit too much force in it. Groff did well despite the uh, the pressure from from Feng there. That's true. So Rolf, nice little catch there. Yeah. Rolf, uh, he's, he's a returning player. Rolf, been playing for two and a half years. Yep, from the uh, Wellington Wildcats. Shout out to any Wildcats watching uh, today. <laughs> yes, played um, played in Poland as you did, Gussie. I sure did. Played against uh, some of these New Zealand boys. Actually, played against Rolf. He was very good. And still is. And still is. Mm. That's right. Don't even need to put it in past tense. Uh, yes, and it was a nice, uh, nice throw from Whitlock. Whitlock, uh, an Auckland-based player, been playing since 2013, so one of the more wow. experienced. Certainly coming through in his um, in his throws. He's also a returning player, mm -hmm. and uh, he is looking forward to quote unquote some sweet hucks and money grabs. And hey, that was a pretty I sweet hug. I'm not sure we've seen many money grabs from him, but definitely some some cheeky cheeky dishes. Yeah, room for improvement. <laughs> nice pull there, Australians. Hagen keep go moving with keys. Looks to Prendergast. Got Paddy Graham deep. Probably a bit too deep. Probably. I would have still done it. And Pat Graham makes one step under, goes <laughs> deep straight away again. Whitlock. Ooh, is that a money Was grab? A money D, maybe. Yeah, certainly not a grab. No. Certainly not a grab. <laughs> You're right. You're right. But nice D, and it's a fun matchup, the uh, the Whitlock uh, Graham matchup. Let's get this tight defense, boy! Whitlock. Back at it again. Inside. Nice big fakes there. Oh, heads up defense from uh, Prendergast. Hagen to pick it up. He's got keys in the dump position. Looking for Nichols on that first movement, I think. Sorry, that's not Nichols. That's Jono Jones. They're all wearing the same hat, Max. Oh, keys. That's a great throw. Hits Graham. Yeah, With nice, nice bid. Yeah. Nice bid. But uh, could One not apiece. secure that particular money. One apiece in the uh, Graham Whitlock trophy. Yeah, it's the memorial matchup. So... Australia, again, just holding on to their lead. As we just watched this, just slipped through the hands of Keys, but managed to keep his toes in. Waited nicely. New Zealand player doesn't oh, see it. He's a great bid, though. Yeah. Classy, classy play. So, John O'Keys. From Wollongong, yes. I believe. Yeah, only been uh, only been playing for a year. Uh, we've asked all the players for a little bit of experience. He's he's put uh, put that he lost the final to the Victorian boys at Youth Nats this year. So obviously uh, that's he's still <laughs> stuck with him. <laughs> flame is still burning there, which is uh, yeah, surprised he threw it to Pat Graham. Actually, he was from Victoria. Mm, probably probably took in that extra half second yeah, as a result. Yeah. But uh, good to see these guys can put their state versus state rivalries behind them. It's well done, well done. Victorian Tom Boyle. Cool. And again, oh, the New Zealand players uh, trying to adjust to this junky set. We'll see if the Australians transition here. Still holding it. Putting a lot of pressure on. Oh, wow. Boyle and Kidd have been pierced there, the gap between them. And it's uh, Ford who has the disc now on the sideline. Gets it off to uh, Fitzpatrick Cockrum. They're knocking on the door again, the New Zealanders. But uh, travel call potentially there from Tom Boyle. He's certainly got his eyes on the, uh, the pivot points. He does. Which is funny because he forgot his shoes. <laughs> It's Patrick Cockrum. Hits the middle of the field. Oh, Tommy Ball's been done. He's been done twice. Oh, but he recovers, he recovers nicely. Well. 
Oh, wow. Great fake. Immaculate fakes, but it ended up faking himself out probably link later. Lovell picks it off, off the ground. Hits Boyle on that dump. And he's going to look deep. Yes, he is. One of the nicest flicks in the biz. Oh. Arguably had two receivers there. Could have taken it. Yeah, just bounced off the hand, unfortunately. Well read. Of Eichner. Oh, and yeah. The South Australian. So <laughs> New Zealand. Mike Palmer gets his scarf out again. <laughs> Any mention of South Australia. And Rolf uh, with the disc. They have a have a few deep shots coming, but a big under there. It's Fitzpatrick Cockrum. Oh, and just misses that. Australia now pushing the pace a little bit, but there is a call. A travel call, I think, on Hodgson. Potentially fair enough. Tom Boyle doesn't do the greatest pass back to him. It's a good heads up, T. Bit of a miscue. Yeah. There to get it. This is back in. They're going towards the end zone. Oh, oh it's a great layout. Who is that down there? Obscured by the sideline. I think it is number 90, Tom Butler. Oh, Tommy Butler, born in New Zealand. <laughs> born in New Zealand. Would you That's believe? Right. The man from Manly. Yes. Via New Zealand. He's now... Um, yeah, he, he really is the crowded house of this team, isn't he? <laughs> the far lap. The Pavlova. Yeah. Big open under there for the New Zealanders. Oh, and he's oh, off. Fitzpatrick Cockrum has some steps deep on Boyle, and it's going to go up. It's, it's a two-on-one two on one. situation. Tommy Boyle's up against it. Wow. Oh, it's and just played it out. The, the win there really just took it. The wind is on Team Australia, I think you'd have to say. Yeah, for the moment. For the moment. Good point, Max. But uh, you, uh, it looked good out of the hand, you have to say. You'd be happy with that one. But, uh, yeah, that uh, just got put on a conveyor belt about a foot higher than anybody could reach it and uh, went all the way through the factory floor to the, uh, the sideline, unfortunately. New Zealand setting up in a zone. I think Australia a bit slow to recognise it. Grant there. Oh, Tommy Boyle gets out a beautiful looking hammer. Bit of movement here from Lovell and Hodgson. Up to Nichols. Hodgson again. Oh, that's very well worked. All coming from that first hammer there from Tom Boyle to break open the field. It's a great movement from Lovell and Hodgson. Yeah, coaches will be happy with that one. I mean, uh, one of the things we've been seeing is Austra this Australian team, obviously. They need uh, both teams really need a moment of brilliance to sort of crack it open when we're in those in those tight spots in the corner when both teams are in those tight spots in the corner. But Australian doing a really good job and New Zealand as well actually of once that that pass comes off, which is just such a nice hammer, uh, really hustling to uh, continue make sure the con the cup can't catch up, which they never end up doing. A great shot there from Nichols as well into space. Are we sure that uh, Nick Hodgson didn't uh, represent his state in long jump there, Matt? Yes, certainly true. Maybe triple jump. Hodgson, of course, good Canberra boy from the nation's capital. Sure is. Playing with um, Fishwick and Burley Griffins. He's just happy to be part of the future of Australian Ultimate. He really is. That's what I'm getting from his response to uh, some of our questions. Mm -hmm. Very happy to be here. And of course was uh, MVP at the 2017 Australian Youth Ultimate Championships. So yep. technically the best player, uh, best under 18 player in Australia, that's Gussie. Right. That's right. Uh, it is tradition for a, uh, a Canberra handler to receive that MVP award. Of course it has been Ryan Waters in the past. He's too old, 2017. Well done there from Whitlock to get it through the cup. I'll go straight back to Whitlock. So you have to say here, New Zealand doing an okay job of finding this centre reset, but then nothing really emerging directly afterwards. And you'd have to say, Max, at 11-9, I think it's a pretty crucial O point here for New Zealand. Crucial is a word that I like to use in commentary, Gussie, so yes, crucial. crucial. And Whitlock looks to get it back, and he does. Playing in a very tight space, New Zealand. Half-heartedly fakes a hammer. Good crash there from the cup, making that throw very difficult. Whitlock looks like he just wants to march it up the whole field at the moment. He's happy to work it there with Ron Burns. 
two of them, the two of them just getting little dishes. It's not quite going to work. This oh oh yeah, speak oh. too soon, Gussie. Eat my heart out. Oh, nice little over the top there. Burns and Whitlock stretches it nicely there. The player coming through the middle. It's now Ford finds Whitlock again. And it's going to be Whitlock who gets it back right on the sideline. Pass count succeeding probably 20 or 30 now. But they're still gaining meters max. That's, that's, a, true. that's something different from the last few points we've seen them play. But they are right up against the sideline now. Yeah, you really want a nice open up. Oh, it's a great bid from the Australian number 18. But New Zealand retains it. Oh my goodness. Bodies flying everywhere at the moment, but that leaves a gap for the New Zealanders. How many little passes can they get through the cut, Max? How sustainable is that? Well, we're about to find out, Gussie. Oh. It is, of course, Fitzpatrick Cockrum with the goal. Yes. So maybe not fully sustainable, but uh, maybe we're halfway. Maybe it's clean coal there. Mm. Just uh, Great analogy. Yeah, thank you. And uh, there's some great bids from the Australian team uh, early on. Number 18, really pushing the pace, looking to try and get that block. But uh, by contrast, the New Zealand's did a very good job of exploiting it when they had that opportunity. They sure did. I'll tell you what, it's a, it's a frustrating one for the for the Aussies because you feel like they were close. They did exactly what a zone's meant to do. Uh -huh. Pressure a lot of passes, but uh, New Zealand manages to weather the storm. Takes a lot of calm and experience to get that many one-meter dishes up the line. I think that's a bit of time cap. Yes, not a um, not a novelty car horn, but a the time cap <laughs> has been called. So um, here we are. It's going to be they're going to finish this point, I believe. Presuming the time cap did in, did just go between these points, and then we'll be adding one to the score. So it'll either be game to twelve or game to eleven. Yeah, it can't be game to eleven. I Only take that 11. back. Game Sorry, to game to 12 or game to 13. So, New Zealand. Pull to the Aussies. It's too much. <laughs> too many wheat picks. Do they have wheat picks in New Zealand? I was, I was just about to say that, actually. I reckon guys. they do. I reckon they do. I reckon, I reckon, they it's, do. I reckon it's, uh, it's an Anzac thing. Yep, I agree with that. So tell you, tell you what they don't have, crowd a house. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's a zone. Johnny Keys with it. And the former Wollongong looks to Tommy Butler. And Butler's going to... Oh, Hagen with a good, powerful cut through the zone. Mm -hmm. He's struggling now a little bit. Bit of a push pass maybe, I think. Wow. And the drop from Keys. New Zealand Cup was probably about 3.01 metres away, putting a lot of pressure on those handlers. Whitlock in the dump position. Not Dangerous. a lot coming here for New Zealand, though. Straight back. Whitlock with, with it now. Going to look for the full 10 seconds before he hits Newman. Nice little Dylan Freechild move there, back up the sideline. Newman's looking... Sorry, uh, Whitlock's looking to finish it off. But... And no, he's going to throw it. And Rolf with the catch. Takes it to 11s, Max. Tons of space. And Ooh. there is a call. Uh, there's a stall Contested call. Contested stall call. Great hand signals from Whitlock. Yeah, making the ad advisors somewhat redundant. Stalling nine, is it, Woody? Thank you. Coming in stalling nine, everyone. They are, they are just still discussing it. <laughs> Fair enough. You want to have your opinions heard in this kind of situation. <clears throat> well, if you're playing along at home, feel free to go back to the point, get out a stopwatch mm. and time along. You ever do that, Max? Have I ever done that watching a game of Ultimate Frisbee? Mm. Yes. Yeah, me too. Mm. It's revealing, isn't it? 11.5 seconds wow. we've heard from Mike Palmer. It's a nice, it's a slow. Incredibly specific. And so wow. so he, uh, Whitlock actually got a bit of extra time. Oh, oh, it's oh, a great D. Is it a touch there from Ikna? Hey, either way, the result is the Australians get the disc back. 
Another chance to put it in. New Zealand with this zone set up. Okay, he's cramped down the corner. O'Hagan. Bit, bit of a release valve. Butler doing the same for him. Butler shakes his head, not happy how close everybody is at the moment. He's approaching a double team. Oh, so Hagen tries to rip a hammer. Yeah, Hagen probably really? ins ins a bit inspired by Tommy Boyle, potentially. Yep. But, uh, you know. Really damaged some low-flying birds there. <laughs> Tommy Butler on the mark. It's Nauman with the disc. To Whitlock. Oh, that's wow. potentially a foul there from Keyes. Good commitment to the course, but I think he's got the player in that layout. Yep, uncontested foul coming in zero. About a head height's difference between those players as well. So uh, New Zealand, rather, on the downwind sideline. They'll probably want to get it off there, but of course Whitlock looks confident with it. Rolf catches it. This time, no discussion. The goal's going to stand. Now it's 11's max. And folks, this is it. Game to 12, Game 11 to 12. all. We are on universe point in this very first of the Trans-Tasman Test Series. A timeout called by Kylo. Smart move. This is it. It's a timeout called. Wow, Gussie. Who would have thought this first game would be so close? Uh, you, you thought uh, that? I, you didn't mention it. I wasn't. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you're well, not surprised, is yeah, that what you're two, saying? They're two relatively even teams. I don't think it's... Yeah, it's great to see, but... Uh, it is great to I'm, see. I definitely think some people would have thought that it would have been close. If you thought that this was going to be close, please let us know, <laughs> YouTube comments, or uh, you can always tweet out Mr. Max Howland. Now, um, be interesting to see what kind of line Australia puts out. I think offensively you'll see Tommy Boyle out there. Probably see Nicholas Lely out there. You might want that deep shot in Graham. Yeah. Now, Max, I'm going to use this uh, opportunity to give you a bit of Transman history. Oh. At the uh, the last trans Tasman tournament in New Zealand, uh, the second game in the series, so Australia was up 1-0 at that stage, the second game in the series was also a universe point game. Australia came out on D in that case. Came away with it. Ooh. But the roles are reversed here. We're in a different country. Mm. We have a different team coming out on D. And also very few of the same players are here. So it's a completely different game, Max. Are you suggesting that potentially past performance is not indicative of future results, Gus? Yes. However, I think it is good to acknowledge the past performances. Interesting. To position the viewer. Yeah. Well, I hope you're a well-positioned viewer <laughs> because we're about to uh, break from this time out. A big thunder there from the Australians. Yeah, they're exciting. They'll be bringing the noise. New Zealanders still that picture of... Uh, Calm, relax. Where would you say the momentum is, Max? It's been ebbing and flowing throughout the whole game. I'd say New Zealand had it for the first half. Does Australia have it now, or is it kind of even? Well, New Zealand just got a break to get to force this pass. It'll be interesting to see what defense they come out in. That zone was uh, certainly effective at uh, changing the momentum, but it may have been tied to the personnel they had on. You'd Without Boyle and Lely running the show behind, uh, or I should say Boyle and Lely have been doing an amazing job in the, that handler space. So you're a bit less likely maybe to throw a zone on, on a group like this, but what do you do if you're New Zealand? Hard, hard match defense. Hey, but they've got Driscoll on the field who's gotten oh. a bunch of blocks this game. Look out for Driscoll, number they've got, nine. We've got Whitlock chasing down. Boyle with it, and is it? It's a bit poachy, hard to tell at the stage. There's a deep player. They don't see him. Well, he gets up. Well, calm and composed on the disc. Hits O'Hagan. O'Hagan, oh, it's a great penetrative throw. Over to Julio on the far sideline. Seth with it now. Back to Matt Hanna. Oh, oh the hammer, but doesn't throw it. Cheeky grin on the face of Hanna. Tommy Boyle punts it. Oh, oh wow. Multiple hands touch the disc, but it's New Zealand who end up with the disc. They're going to have an opportunity. Whitlock, it's over on the other side of the field. Now number 20, McGowan. There's Another few plays back backhand. Then. Oh, it's a, it's a zone look back. They've, a they've, slow setting zone. They've thrown the zone on. Whitlock now. And he's going to do it. Sending Where's it Paddy? to the end zone. Where's Paddy G? Get him in there. 
Oh, and does enough. There is a foul call. Potential foul call here. I think there'll be some discussion. I imagine this one will be one that gets discussed. Usually they do on Universe Point. Yeah, I'd discuss it. Mm. Mm. Give it a discuss. As we watch it again on replay, mm. there's a bit of contact on the way up. You can't argue with that. You can't argue with that. But um, it'll be interesting to see what they what the out, what their outcome is. It's a tough one because it did appear to go quite far it over. It did look quite far over. Both. Maybe Rolf represented his state in high jump though. You know, we just don't know. That's true. Those are the kind of stats high. we don't have. I believe it is a retracted foul. Thank you, Rob Swan, for the hand signals. Tommy Boyle walking to pick it up. And um, based on the throw, probably a fair result given that uh, all the players basically out of position. No one got a hand on it. So Australia having another crack. Swings it over to Matt Hanna. Nick Lelly. He's a man you want with the disc in these situations. Two players from the New South Wales mixed. Big hammer over the top. Hits Seth. Lovell, who has Paddy Graham, but doesn't do it. Good movement here from the Australians. Lely with it. Bit of chaos from the New Zealanders. Australians looking to exploit it. Lely. Oh! oh. Okay, wow. It's going to be a foul call again. And, you know, I reckon, Max, it's going to be some more discussion. I think uh, that's the one thing we can guarantee is a bit of discussion. It was a it was a great bid, but did it bring up contact? Lance from both players. It's a tough one to I see. I think Lovell's isn't it? potentially getting a hand on it, mm. and there's definitely contact. One Not of sure. those one of those tough ones that in, it needed a change of direction from the Australian player, um, mm. Mm. which uh, which is just it's going to make it murky in terms of the kind of contact foul calls. You can see the Australian player is going for a wide pass. He doesn't quite get the width that he needs yeah, to change his direction here. And uh, that oh, oh, then caused you got to from from that play by play replay. I'm saying Lovell had a, an opportunity to catch it. Mm. It's whether or not the contact was the reason that he dropped it. That's fair. I think, I think Lurley may maybe just a little bit cautious of the wind with that throw. Really zipped it in. Yep. Didn't uh, didn't float it out. Yeah. I figure that that pass had been maybe a meter further right, but uh, retracted foul call. It's been retracted. So New Zealand going to have the disc. It's a good result. It's great to see these players resolving their calls um, really effectively with the help of the game advisors. Wow, so New Zealand take two on their opportunity to score on this universe point in the first Trans-Tasman game between uh, the Aussie Thunder and the uh, Katipo. Katipo? Katipo. Nailed it. The mighty Katipo. New Zealand just working around their handlers as we've seen them do many times before. Rolf in a little bit of space if the swing was to come off. And again. Which we know Whitlock can hit. New Zealand just again, just taking it at three metres by three metres. They finally get one in. They bait the Australians a little bit too close this time. Whitlock's gone oh, through. Lily. Oh, he should be catching that though, shouldn't he, Lily? Driscoll straight off. Hit. Driscoll straight off. Oh, Driscoll. oh Driscoll. Driscoll! But it's up in the air. Tommy Blow underneath. Oh, oh he Boyle. gets up and he drops it. Oh, that is the block is that we've exciting. seen Driscoll get multiple times this game. Gets it again in a clutch situation. And New Zealand has looked good from these positions. Australians are forcing backhand. With luck with it. And that is it. Rolf gets it. Easy as you like. It's New Zealand who draws first blood in this Trans-Tasman series. 1-0. The boys are up 1-0. 1-0, but of course it's best out of three, Max. It's a series of three games. That is true. Three games will be played. You can watch again this afternoon. Uh, and there will be another game again streaming live through YouTube. Mm. And hey, public service announcement, if you're in Sydney watching this, if you're in New South Wales and you think, hey, that was a really good game of Frisbee, come down to uh, Balmain Road Sports Fields. Yeah, boys, would, uh, boys and girls rather would really appreciate your support. There's plenty of, uh, of luminaries of Australian Ultimate on the, uh, on the sideline. You can see Mike Neald and Danny Alexander. Where? Over on the sideline. Oh, yeah. cool. uh, Gavin, you know, Moore. Gavin Moore. Uh, this is a fun game. Who else? <laughs> you want to list all the, the people on the sideline? The point is, <laughs> the point is, some great, great Australian frizzy players. Yep. Get down here, support the boys and girls. And if you're watching at home, if you're stuck in some terrible other location that isn't the greatest city on earth, then please stay around for the 10:30 game, uh, which will be between the Australian uh, women's under 18 team. Terra. The Southern Terror. Southern Terror. And the uh, New Zealand under-18s women's team. That is 
Kahu. Kahu, of course a bird. 